Yo, what's up guys, Psychronicles here. Talking about my first year in Galagos, I did make my Galagos guide already, which is a different video, which is the first link in the description. If you want to know all about like how Galagos works and that kind of stuff, I'm not going to go over all of that. I'm more going to show like, okay, what are the things that I did for the current run? Uh, I cleared it in about four hours ish, if I would have played it nonstop on the very first day. And this was actually my first Galagos clear because I never cleared it in NA. And for me as an Orbiad was pretty easy. So definitely if you are a Kina or if you are a Cleave, you will have different units that are more useful for you. And what I really noticed, I selected a lot of DPS units here as an Orbiad. You don't really need DPS units. You just need tanks and you need supports. Like I used a few DPS units here and there to, well, the only thing they actually help is just speed up things. And in the end, I actually didn't really use all of my units. So before we actually go into this, I have like my complete thought of what I did. I wrote down a whole bunch of pointers of what was interesting to show. But first of all, let's actually go into showing what or like how far did I clear it? I cleared it fully on penalties. I used all the way penalties. I did switch my penalties at some point. So don't use the exact same penalties all the time. You can actually switch them at any given moment. I didn't have to reset the dungeon, which is also a possibility to do. Um, so these are all of the units that I selected. You can't really see the few at the bottom left. You're missing Dova and Viva Chill. Um, But you can take a screenshot of this to just see like, okay, which units I actually use, which units were very useful. So units that I would definitely recommend to use are like the Konomiya, the Theon. Uh, Gaara was kind of useful for me. I really like Mavenir. Chloe is pretty much a must. Theon, of course. Shushi was very nice. Celia is pretty much a must. Uh, Anava was insanely strong. Verdi Hill is actually very strong if you get the correct uh, buffs at some point. Jasun was pretty useful, didn't use it all too much, but those are very useful. Uh, Shongfei I used a few times. Dova is half HP as well. I had the option to build a Lulu, but if you see this, like, okay, what kind of units could I have added and what units are kind of useless? So Dark Monkey is kind of useless. The Sarian's kind of useless. Um, what else do I have? Teora actually did use, so that one was kind of useful. Uh, Feng Yang could have been used. King was kind of useless. Moomin Ryber could have been used. Naomi is useless. Argon is useless. So units that you can place in there for, for example, four stars. Uh, Bracuni is definitely not bad. Or Colleen is not bad. So a lot of those healer types, uh, tanky types, those kind of units that you have to think of that could be very useful. So with that all said, I'm going to go to the VOD and talk about in the VOD, like, okay, what are the steps that I made? At what point did I start using units? And as you can see, I still had a lot of units left. So you don't, you can actually start using units earlier than I thought. So first of all, selecting all of those units. Also units that could be potentially used for like chilling or windy, just up your damage. In my case for Orbia, I focused a lot on Orbia doing damage and my units surviving and then Orbia also surviving. If you are a cleave, then you would probably focus on you surviving and then focusing on some damage units. If you are Kina, you probably focus on a lot of damage units. So, and you still need your tanks and you probably need less support. So depending which main character you are, I am mainly focusing on Orbia, of course, but also to sidetrack like, okay, Kina's, I would definitely uh, put like a bunch of DPS units in there, a bunch of tank units. I think most of the things you want to run with one DPS or one tank and then Kina supporting them. And as a cleave, you probably want one damage deal of one support most of the time. Um, whereas Orbia is easier to, well, also solo things. But actually, I didn't solo too many things, which we will see in a second. So I'm just going back and forth a little bit. Uh, first of all, I selected things. And the thing I went for was just going as much gold as possible. That was actually my first idea. Maybe gold is not the best thing to get from this. I kind of selected just everything, like all kinds of like increase the damage day or like reducing all of my damage kind of stuff that's what i went for in the end if i'm not mistaken yeah i went pure gold and i decreased my damage by a shit ton that, that's pretty much what i did which is doable then for monsters i pretty much did the same thing because my monsters don't really need to deal damage so for that reason i can just say like okay all monsters fuck it they just deal no damage whatsoever so i think i selected it i was checking what's in the shop so it's more useful to get gold from this yeah and i just select all kinds of gold things there as well and then for buffing the enemies i went for uh, evasion resistance and attack speed i noticed later those are definitely not the best but we will get to well it's it's good for clearing it early on but at a later point you definitely don't want to do this so that is something we will see changed at a later moment 
So then first few stages, pretty much everything all the way until um, the second floor, I pretty much autoed with Orbia and you move faster in this, which is just kind of funny, but you probably have noticed that already. So I'm just going to skip forward a little bit, first of all. So funny thing is, you have these shops and these shops already sell us uh, uh, vampire runes and also despair runes. We don't have them in the game yet because we get them from Marsh, but... And then again, we still have them already in the game for some reason, and we can buy them already. Which is somewhat interesting, I would say. So moving on to the first boss. Is this the first boss? Yes, it is. Did I clear it? I think I needed one unit. Oh yeah, because of Electric Shock, I couldn't clear it with just my Orbia. I needed something to deal with the Electric Shock. So at first I th thought about Dova, and then I was like, wait, but Dova never cleanses this stuff. Like, it just heals when it auto attacks but that's pretty much useless too that's not really going to help me so i did revive myself but in the end uh, i failed with that so that was completely useless then i switched to ikasha you would say like ld5 ikasha super op blah blah that kind of stuff yes kind of agree but if you have like a shushu or a lulu or something like that that will totally do as well so with that i at some point it did die did i fully die in this okay i just messed up against borbo because i still had the Electric Shock. Electric Shock is pretty annoying. So in here, I would say use one to two units, um, probably just to get rid of the Electric Shock from the, the Shoe Recce or whatever that mad scientist boss is. And then from there, you just get through it. So that does help out quite a bunch. So then the next stage is, uh, I think right away with this next stage, they give quite some Electric Shock as well. I started noticing like I couldn't clear shit. Also, I had like heavy damage reductions on my Orbia. I didn't really have the damage up things on Orbia at the moment here yet. So I couldn't really clear them at all. I tried a few times and I was like, yo, I'm going to need a unit. So I went for Ikashas again, once again. Could be pretty much any of those units that just kind of cleanses. And this was my main cleanser. So with that, I pretty much cleared most of this with Ikasha if I saw that the bosses had, or the, the units had Electric Shock. If they didn't, I mostly just went in solo as far as I remember. So in this case, let me just skip through a bunch further. I think nothing. Yeah, this was like some of those stages I was still able to solo and that kind of stuff. When I saw like the units had Electric Shock, I went for Ikasha and I pretty much used my whole Ikasha here. And then later I had some stages that I could solo again until I came at the boss of the second one. And in this case, we had the double shoe wrecking, which I really don't like. So in this case, I went for. So in this case, I went for a shoe shoe and I also went for a damage dealer because I felt like I probably or first I just did the shoe shoe, but I noticed that I was kind of lacking damage and the time was kind of running out. Plus, at some point, they start healing, which I really didn't like. So because of that, I chose to, uh, when I failed, I think I failed at some point because it just didn't do enough damage. I couldn't really kill anything. That was kind of the issue. So I know that you can snipe them with the uh, wind as one, but I had so many damage reductions that I was doing uh, legit one damage on pretty much every skill that was not water. So I had to bring them to exactly one HP and then switch and then use an as one on wind to actually kill them and yeah at that moment i also died so i was like okay i'm gonna need some damage or i had to change my penalties in this case i uh, chose to add some more damage in the form of garo and with garo in there it started doing a little bit more damage i also noticed that i had the water um new skill like the level 70 skill it might actually be better if you do the water like normal skill i noticed it's actually more damage so and it freezes better than this thing this thing is nice for roots and that kind of stuff and pushbacks but the freeze i think is still better so yeah in the end i was able to clear this with those two units so then a little bit further uh, i think i soloed a few more stages oh, i did some other stuff for a second yeah, in this case, I was like, okay, I'm just going to use one unit in there. And then with that, I just kind of get away. At this point, I also had, if I'm not mistaken, oh, no, wait, I didn't have that yet, that I get, like, life draining. So I was using Orbia Dark every time. Orbia Dark is still gives you drain, and therefore you can start uh, life draining a little bit. But I noticed, like, at first when I did this, I had too little time to actually get through. So at some point, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to need a healer in there. So I'm just going to add economy in there and then clear my way through it that way so that went a little bit faster and quite a bit better and with that i started clearing quite a bunch with these units actually so after that um 
yeah, I started going for this stage and this stage I really noticed that I was lacking damage. And let's see how I overcame that. Some point, oh yeah, I added in the Galleon in this case. So in this case, once again, I could have changed the penalties to actually do more damage rather than adding in the Galleon. But adding in the Galleon for me was pretty fine. So at some point I'm at 3-1 here right now. And I'm already using a team of three units, so that is totally fine. Like, it's better to actually clear something than use one or two units fail and then use one or two units again fail again and that kind of stuff. So, for me personally, like, you could get to the point where you use all of your units. If that is the case, you can still reset the whole dungeon and try again. So, you have a reset per season. I'm not entirely sure how that reset stuff works, but because I didn't have to use it in the end. But you do have that in uh, at hand as well. So afterwards, we had a bunch of stages and I tried again. And I think this was more electric shock or I just didn't have any damage. Was this at the point where, yep, okay, just didn't have enough damage. I'm like, okay, fuck it. I'm just going in with math. Math is actually a pretty good tank. I went in with math, Sekhmet and Kona. And then just spamming the skills on Sekhmet. And this actually went pretty smooth because those units here in this stage are all wind. And with Sekhmet, you actually do a decent amount of damage. I also had the trait that if I do ultimate and I kill things, I get 20% ultimate gauge back. So every time that I ulted and I actually killed things, uh, it was pretty nice. But since I had that much damage reducer or reducers, it was kind of hard to get like kills in with ult as well. So it wasn't really showcased and slash used as well back here yet. So then a bunch of more stages where... I think I used mainly map. Oh, I actually switched to Sean Fei, but Sean Fei was on a damage set over here. That doesn't really work because I didn't have any damage multipliers for any of the units from any of the traits that are any of the cards that I picked. So at some point, I also just fully switched to Sean Fei full tank. Um, Sean Fei is a decent healer in this as well. It actually worked out kind of well. Naomi was 100% useless here. Like in all honesty, I used Naomi here, but that was just a filler of space in all honesty. The unit didn't do anything. Yeah, the 7-3 I was able to solo because I added in like a few uh, things of getting like extra attack on Orbia, extra crit damage on Orbia. So at that point I was like, okay, maybe I can try to solo one or two. And especially since this was a relatively easy stage, I was actually managing to do this pretty decently. So at some point, even if you um, can't, can't clear things at some point, it doesn't mean that when there's an easier stage, you cannot go back to just solo clearing it. Uh, then I had the stage again, which was pretty long with a bunch of bo uh, bosses and that kind of stuff. And I went for the same team as I did the first time. But then I had economy, if I'm not mistaken. So in this case, I took the Teon. And sa same thing, just a lot of galleon spamming, that kind of stuff. So actually, all of my units did die, I think, in this stage. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, wait, too far front. Wait, yeah, pretty much all of my units did die except Garo, and I think Garo died at this point as well. But since I have like the skill from your skill trees that units revive after a certain amount of time, I could just kind of wait out that time, kind of play safe and get those units back as well. And at some point I get my units back and I can start reviving them as well. So that is something that uh, Kina Dark, for example, is very good. Kina Dark can actually revive units on the fly all the time. So that does help out quite a bunch. So afterwards, I think that was the second to final stage, and then we have the final boss on three. So in this case, on the final bosses, I always like to use Chloe. So don't use your Chloe until you're at the final boss, pretty much. And I'm not entirely sure what was at this boss. So I went for Galleon and Sekhmet. It was a Shuraki once again, and then also some other stuff. So once again, um, the main thing you just want to do for all of those bosses is just spam Fnatic. Like at the moment you use those, uh, or you use Chloe for these bosses, Spam Fnatic, that's all the way you want to go for. Chloe is pretty much your best bet at clearing these bosses, especially like the way or like the floor three and the floor uh, four. You definitely do want to have your Chloe still uh, lively, that it has energy, that you can actually use it in here. Um, where Sekhmet and... Oh, I actually died here once. Did I do it again with the exact same team? I think I did. I, th I think I just made a mistake for like the Fnatic. Where Galleon and Segment by all means the best units that I could have used here. I don't even think so, you know, honestly. Like Segment is cool and all, but doesn't really add too much, I guess. Well, it was a decent cleanse for the shoe or a, a strip for the shoe recce, and it's actually not bad against Rotos as well. So kind of works, and Galleon just adds more damage in both cases. So yeah, no, actually this team is pretty decent. So yeah, cleared that, and then you had to kill another Rotos. Takes a little bit of time, and then we cleared it that way.
So yeah, that is pretty much that. Then we started off with floor four and you had to do the trap stage at the first. So also a showcase of like, how do you do the trap stage? You always want to wait for your three dodges and then you just jump through. So you pretty much have like three parts which you want to jump through. So this, in this case, I have zero dodges. I just wait for like a decent amount of time. As you can see, like there's a speed up by three times until I get all of my dodges back. So you might feel like, oh, I'm really wasting time. Now I'm just using like those three dodges. Like I actually had one dodge left, but I'm using those three dodges to actually get through. So in this case, what I mostly do is I stand over here. Once again, I wait for my three dodges. So it, it takes a little bit of time. I think I also had like a few skills that actually ignored those things that were coming at me. And then once again, using the dodges getting through. But that's definitely the best way to get through those uh, parkour stage because those can be pretty annoying. Okay, then we did a bunch more stages and I started noticing I was getting kind of low on damage and I used mainly uh, Bastet shields, spamming Bastet shields to keeping me alive, getting a lot of attack buff and then also math for the... Um, well, pretty much just tanking and that kind of stuff. Map did a pretty good job with that. But as you can see, like I'm doing jack shit damage. So at some point I'm like, yo, I really have to change my penalties or remove my penalties. That was my first idea. Just remove the penalties altogether. And I was like, mm, maybe instead of removing them, I should actually just change them. So is this the point where I already changed them? So no, this is where I failed. And this is where I'm going to change my penalty. So as you can see, the penalties that I have, I have... 40% less damage, 40% less attack, 100% less crit damage. And I'm the main character doing damage at this point. Which I'm like, mm, maybe I shouldn't do this. And also I have extra resistance evasion on the enemy. So therefore it also reduces my damage by quite some. So I started checking in like, okay, what do I not care about? So I know this accuracy, if they land their shit, it's fine. Precision, if they land their shit, it's fine. So I kind of went for more accuracy on like everything for them because I don't have evasion or resistance anyway. So they probably will land everything. So that's kind of a useless stat for them. It's the same thing like like 100 accuracy doesn't really change anything if you're zero um, resistance in Skyrim. I kind of thought of the same thing in here. So in this case, I was like, okay, what do I care least about? Because now I'm doing a lot less damage. I had some extra HP and defense um, cards in to boost up my orbia to not die as easily plus i was always using a tank so i always had like either map or something like that also auto attacks didn't really do too much damage and i had a bunch of things to get back my skills faster so for that reason i was like okay precision i don't really need it i just go uh for reducing that and i actually increased like the damage uh taken so i increased my defense and my hp and then uh, my monsters, I still kept on like, okay, monsters do no damage, reduce all of their damage like altogether. Then I went in with the exact same team and right away I noticed like I did so much more damage and it was a lot easier this way. Also, the monsters didn't attack me at like 175 extra attack speed and that kind of nonsense, which was pretty annoying. And I was just using all my skills to actually get damage in. In this case, I didn't really use any good ulties yet because a stat ult is not really that great. Just soon ult is not really that great. But at this moment, I started noticing like, wait, I actually can use my ult quite some. I'm doing quite some damage. I still have to take it slow to pull units here and there because I was really squishy. Um, there were good odds that one of those bosses, if they start sniping me, one-shotting me and that kind of stuff, I would die. So I really thought I needed like the stat shield. But at some point, I noticed like it was not as bad. So this is the moment I switched in Annabelle. And Annabelle is insanely good if you have that trait where you do extra damage with your... Or not necessarily you do extra damage with your ult, but the moment that your ult kills something, you get your ult back. Annabelle has an AoE armor break for multi-hits with Orbia damage then at the same time. So I was using the team still having map in there. I used a lot of map. Definitely map for Orbia was so, so good. If you don't really have a good tank for uh, this kind of stuff, build the map. Like also, especially like a bunch of those units that you should select in this kind of stuff should be units here. You can see like I pretty much get my full ult back from ulting once. That's that's insane. And that's a good. Um, and I also wait. No, I used actually a Verde Heal ult. And because of using Verde Heal ult, my, I get the um, mana buff, whatever, where all of my mana skills cost one. So you could see me spam like crazy on like the E skill and the Q skill. To get my ulti back and then i could do that again pretty much so verdi is also very good in uh galagos that way but you do have to have the skill ups already to make that work 
So with that, we could clear quite a bunch of things. We cleared them pretty fast. As you can see, like most of the time, it actually shows that I have like the one cooldown for that kind of stuff. So definitely work with the things you have. Like maybe you don't get that buff. Maybe you get some other good buffs that make sense. But kind of like on the fly, adjust what kind of buffs you have. And then for also what kind of things are useful for you to use in your Galaros uh, or Galagos run. So with that, it was, uh, yeah, it actually kind of worked out pretty well. The, those stages were actually a lot more fun uh, to do by all means because it was just easier to clear. So at then at some point, um, I think my Verdeo was out or actually what well, I know is like, okay, Verdeo is cool, but I can actually just do that like an Anvil ult as well, which is very strong too. And with Anvil ult, I pretty much clear everything and then get my ult fully back. Plus I was using Celia, which is one of the units I saved until pretty much the last because Celia passive. It's just insanely good for killing multiple units and it's probably the best support for Galagos in general. Because you get your extra uh, mana up kind of stuff every time you kill shit. So that's just insanely good. So with that, I was saving her for the last floor pretty much. I could have used her earlier because I noticed at some points like she's not even like draining that much of her stamina or energy or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, as you can see, every time I ulted with Annabelle, I pretty much got my full ult back if there were a bunch of units. So I'm most of the time was mobbing shit, ulting, having half of my ult back. And here as well, I think I have to do one more skill, ult. And okay, in this case, I kind of used it on the bosses, so I didn't really have it that much. But as you can see, I'm pretty much ulting like a lot. And Annabelle ult with Orbia ult together is so nice. So yeah, definitely check out for those kind of things. Um, like also if you're Kina or if you're Cleave, you probably have some cool interactions of things where you could say like, okay, um, if I just clear enough things with this or that, I get this passive proc that I got from a specific card all the time and I can abuse that, spam that and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, with that, I pretty much used that all the way till like the final stage. And then the final stage was over here and uh, I don't remember exactly what I used. I actually used this team, so I still use my Chloe, so the Chloe was very important for me. I used the Verdi heal, so I could ult with Verdi heal and then spam Chloe fanatics even easier. And then a Galleon. And Galleon was just like overall damage. So in this case, we had the uh, double lizard with a shoe recce. And the thing is, I had to get my first ult up by just using fanatics. That was the main thing. Verdi Hill, for example, didn't really add too much value to it. Like during the fight, Galleon neither. But at some point, I can switch to that ult. And then I can just start spamming like uh, Galleon shields or Galleon uh, skills. I could actually probably just spam Galleon shields to reduce the cool time for that much that a Chloe would get her fanatic up by herself. I didn't even have to switch to do fanatic. Probably I can just do fanatic indirectly by uh, Galleon spams. But I felt that was not that safe. I never really tried it, but I think it is possible in the end. But yeah, with that, I just used that and then waited until my ult was up and then kind of going back and forth like that again. In this case, I did use fire rather than uh, water because fire has the uh, burning. So you need a debuff to, or not a debuff. You need a dot. Otherwise, you're doing no, no damage on these lizards. So I was like, okay, I can also focus on switching to water all the time and then also having fire for the dot or switching to dark for the dot or anything like that. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to mind my skills and the ult and fixing it that I switch every time to third ult. And then I just keep doing damage in, dark, in fire. And then I also have some of the extra burning damage. And I work around it that way. So that way at some point it was able to clear all of those units. Then you have the shoe recce left. And in this case, since it was that much easier to uh, switch to my other skills. And also use Galleon to get my skill one back. It was just a lot easier. And with that you get another card for no reason. I don't really don't know why. It's pretty much something similar as where you get 50 gold from killing the Nexus in uh, League of Legends. But this is the final stage already. So with that, I cleared Galagos. So I cleared it pretty much. This whole clip is like a six and a half hour stream. I did some TOA before that uh, or quite a bunch of TOA. And I also waited a bunch of things. So I pretty much cleared all of Galagos in like four hours, four to four and a half hours. Um, I was not too familiar with Galagos. Like before this, the furthest I cleared was a floor 4 1, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, so I think next like next rotation, I could probably do it in like three and a half, four hours for sure, because I'm more used to it. And actually, like I mentioned before, I had a lot of units left. So I could start using units a lot earlier. And 
yeah, with that, for Orbia, definitely not too difficult. I think it's very doable. For Kina and Cleave, of course, I don't have the experience with it, but I still think it's quite doable because as you can see, if I go to my character, I legit had like half of my units left or even more than half. Wait, how many did I have left? Yeah, I would say pretty much half. So that is a lot more that I could have used. So wouldn't say necessarily like floor one right away, start using three units and that kind of stuff. No, maybe for like Kina, like you use one DPS unit in there. But I think even Kina can solo first floor. And then from second floor, I also started using some units already. So you just use like one or two. And then from like three and four on, you can check like, okay, whether you can use some or you don't use some. So that is pretty much my whole run of Galagos. Uh, I noticed that some people were like, okay, how far are you? How far are you? I'm like, dude, I was finished in the first day. So it felt to me pretty easy, but I heard some more people struggling with it. So therefore this guide of pretty much the highlights of my whole uh, Galagos run. And of course, I'll also be streaming this like every time it is reset because I think it's pretty fun content. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like this video and subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you 